so hello everyone uh, this is the 11th iteration of uh, cyber jagrutta divas and uh, with us today we have a serving navy officer indian navy officer captain anubhav agarwal uh, i'll just briefly introduce him and then i'll just hand over the podium to him so he completed his btech in electrical and electronics engineering from the naval college of engineering and is a proud alumnus of iit kanpur where he completed his post graduation in computer science he has more than 20 years of experience in managing cyber security in the indian navy he has been involved in the design development and life cycle management of various information security products including secure naval pen drive secure encrypted environment for naval systems encryption cards for various naval applications etc he has a keen interest in cloud technologies and emerging trends and he has kept pace with industry with certifications in uh, cissp and ccsp and with this short uh, introduction i will now hand it over to uh, anubhav sir anubhav sir over to you thank you thank you so much sir for a, a, a good introduction i must say and uh, i am uh, very fortunate to be amidst the best of the brains in the country and uh, to deliver a talk to the uh, such a wonderful audience so with that uh, although i would uh, apologize in the beginning itself because it has been a very short notice for me and uh, uh, mostly whatever uh, came to my mind i have put that into the presentation to bring out uh, security concepts in the cloud whatever i know of a little bit uh, based on and my let me let me also like uh, just interject and and thank you for uh, agreeing to be our speaker uh, is at such a short notice i know we we had some other speaker but he cancelled at the at just the 11th hour and i had to uh, you know uh, request you and you were kind enough to accept our invitation so thanks a lot for for, for that and and please you know go ahead no it's always a pleasure uh, to talk uh, to the the good brains of the country so it's a privilege so anyways uh, starting with the the talk uh, uh, i am just going to be introducing uh, a bit on the cloud although i would say that probably most of you would know about cloud technologies you must have uh, uh, dabbled with them and you must have played around with them and uh, uh, still i would just take a very very short introduction in the few of uh, the beginning slides which may be a repetition to uh, many of you but i'll go quick on that and then what i have done is i have tried to bring out the ovas top 10 cloud vulnerabilities risks we will discuss them in detail because if we are clear about the top 10 risks and vulnerabilities in the cloud uh, then possibly we have uh, to a certain extent at least we have reached the troposphere uh, if not the sky uh, for the clouds so we will do that and then i will uh, will uh, possibly uh, uh, discuss a few of the emerging trends a few of the attacks and maybe Uh, a key concept uh, of mapping of the cia triad which we call in the normal terms in uh, cyber security we always look for the cia triad to be fulfilled in terms of security but the cloud technologies the latest technologies uh, are shifting this trend to a different one which i would possibly explain about so with that uh, yeah so as i was mentioning this is just a overview introduction and uh, securing ovas a few of the privacy concerns and then a uh, little bit of my recommendations so cloud technology has grown and it is uh, it is one of the fastest growing technologies in terms of the emerging trends and the revenue which uh, is being pumped in into the cloud computing this is a this is the data from the gartner uh, and as you can see on the graph the cloud technology versus the traditional technology the revenue which has been pumped in has drastically moved on in the last uh, in fact 5 years not even more than that it is uh, and it is uh, going to be surpassing the traditional uh, computing resources uh, in terms of the revenue spent by the industry on cloud and the growth in revenue uh, is also shown in terms of the percentage increase it is it's increasing on a rapid pace so that's the adoption of cloud cloud uh, i don't have to explain that how it benefits the uh, new organizations new startups today cloud is uh, allowing the startups to have a very very little mean time to market their products in the market and it has made competition uh, uh, so much into the market that uh, the startups are able to bring out their products their ideas into the market Uh, with minimal investments because of cloud technology so that's the power 
government of india will will come back home and we will see government of india has also launched a project megraj which was launched in 2013 for setting up of a, a cloud uh, for government services and uh, i will possibly cover a little bit more about what are the services which are being uh, given to the government organizations uh, and all the e services which are being given to the citizens are mostly by the departments on the government cloud however the most important part is the leaders of today in it how do they how do they secure the cloud so that's a question which uh, we will try to answer a little bit there are technologies cloud service providers uh, the cloud consumer so when i when i talk about customer or consumer in my talk i'll be mostly referring to the cloud consumers it can be an organization it can be an individual but uh, whenever i say consumer customer user that i'll be referring to uh, as the cloud consumer and the csp is the uh, cloud service provider mostly these are the uh, 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 abbreviations which i might be using uh, during the talk so so the cloud characteristics service models and deployment models i'll just cover quickly for those who are not so familiar with the cloud cloud uh, computing provides us the platform to have resources on our hand whenever we need them from wherever we need them so uh, the topmost layer shows the characteristics of the cloud starting from the broad network access we can use any of the device and any of the network to connect to the cloud resources and utilize them and configure them as we want them so there are various service providers the uh, big players in the cloud computing technology starts with the aws google cloud uh, uh, microsoft azure and many others uh, oracle cloud many others are there but the market leader in this seems to be aws as far as uh, my knowledge goes but uh, yes it's a emerging field going to the rapid elasticity the cloud provides elasticity because uh, at the click of a button you can increase the resources you can decrease the resources based on the load you can increase and decrease so it provides the complete uh, elasticity in the cloud you can create a complete setup uh, as an infrastructure uh, on a code which is which is also called as infrastructure uh, as code you can write code create a complete infrastructure out of the blue and Uh, demolish it as you want so this is the kind of elasticity which the cloud provides you today you can have multiple vms you can decrease them increase them you can have a uh, uh, database you can have uh, storage all at the click of a button uh, another characteristics is the measured service uh, the uh, measured service is the uh, we also call it as metered service wherein uh, uh, you are metered and you pay as per your usage you don't have to involve Uh, uh the more capital costs in uh, procuring hardware servers data center and create a complete infrastructure beforehand in an organization before you launch your application so this has made cloud one of the most preferred uh, solutions for all these small companies startups wherein they can just pay as they go uh the next one is the on service on on demand self service wherein you can demand the resources it is just at the click of the button as a cloud uh, account holder and the cloud services are available to you and uh, without any uh, prior commitment without any prior payment it is available to you as you go as a service all of this is delivered through resource pooling most of the cloud providers in fact all of the cloud providers use resource pooling they have uh, concepts like multi tenancy they have con uh, uh, they uh, co uh, combine the resources and because of that they are able to utilize the power of combination of these resources which is the resource pooling to provide at a, a cheap cost at and to provide all of these features which are essentially the characteristics of the cloud uh, going to the uh, service models we have typically three major service models which we all are aware of uh, which are also called as the spi service models because of the software platform and infrastructure as a service so software uh, as you can see on the right side of the slide you can see how the layers are stacked up the lower level uh, the lower levels uh, layer start with the infrastructure where in the facility hardware and uh, the other abstraction layers for the cloud management is what the basic infrastructure as a service provider provides you you can have higher layers wherein you can have the apis you can have the middleware you can have the uh, platforms available to you multiple different platforms and the platform as a service providers provide you this complete uh, combination as a package wherein they take the responsibility of the entire 
uh, hardware layer as well as the platform layer. So that's platform as a service. And then we have uh, software as a service, which uh, we uh, various examples exist, uh, like Office 365 and various Salesforce CRM solutions, which allows you to only have data put into the application. The complete software is also managed as a service by these service providers. There are various other new models which are coming in into the market now with database as a service, backup as a service, security as a service, to the extent that ransomware as a service is also uh, now available. So, so that's how this uh, cloud is becoming so popular and we have ransomware as a, as a service as well. So uh, uh, before we go into uh, the more security concepts of the cloud, I would like to just uh, uh, make you aware if you are not about the shared responsibility model, which is very important in a cloud. In traditional environments, generally we used to have on-prem uh, servers and the complete ownership responsibility was of the owner owning organization. However, in the cloud, we have these layers which are there and there is a, a very clear cut demarcation of the responsibility of who is responsible in the cloud because the data is from the consumers, the hardware uh, and maybe platform and maybe the software may be uh, provided by the, by the CSP. So as you can see the leftmost column on prem, uh, the orange shows the customer and everything is controlled and owned and uh, responsibility of everything is lying with the organization in the on-prem uh, 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 method. However, in IAS, you have the various layers up to virtualization, which are, which are the responsibility of the cloud service provider. And they provide you, uh, the, the, they manage the complete infrastructure, hardware, data center, servers, and the virtualization platform. On top of that, you can design a solution, you can architect a solution, you can on demand have your VMs, your database, your complete, you can choose your operating system, you can uh, uh, do everything and this provides much more flexibility. However, you also have to see that the responsibility of maintaining and managing all the layers above this are the cloud consumer. Uh, as a platform as a service, uh, once the platform is provided uh, by the, uh, 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 the cloud service provider. They manage the up to the platform, which is the middleware and the runtime. And you take care of the applications and the data which you put on top of that. You can run any applications. That complete flexibility is yours. However, the security of the application and the data also belongs to you. Now, the last part is the software as a service. Although I, I have uh, taken this uh, diagram uh, from... Uh, one of the sources I am I am not able to recognize that, but yes, I can definitely find a, a issue in this. Uh, as per my understanding, the data in software as a service uh, is the responsibility of the customer because the data is what you put into the uh, cloud when you are using the software as a service, and the data responsibility is yours. Yes, the cloud uh, service provider may provide you some means and may provide you some mechanisms for securing that, but the data is your responsibility as in you are the owner of the data. Uh, however, the other layers are all managed by the cloud service provider. So moving ahead quickly, uh, uh, the evolution of the web. So this is how the cloud also has evolved. We, we see that in a web service, you first of all need the hardware. So that came as infrastructure as a service and uh, the uh, compute and storage is provided by the cloud service provider. On top of that, you require uh, a platform wherein you can run applications, you can make a software and therefore came the concept of the pass wherein the platform is provided as a service. After that, on top of that, you write your applications and then you get on uh, once you have written all of that, you have a website which is available. So this is the typical uh, web development uh, model and it uh, goes on along with the cloud services as well uh, with the different uh, service models which are there. Okay, so now coming to the deployment models, public cloud, everybody is aware that the public cloud is something which is provided to the public, to the general public. Uh, it is not for specific use by anybody. It, anybody can uh, take the services and use that as a public cloud. Uh, so on your enterprise, you can have a connectivity through a VPN and you can connect up to your cloud resources. You can create a virtual private uh, network over there. You can 
which is called as a VPC in the cloud. You can have your resources, you can separate them out, you can have your public network in the cloud, you can have your private network in the cloud, you can use various services which are provided for like uh, cloud distribution network is there, WAP is there, various services are all provided by the cloud service providers. You can make and architect your own solution on the cloud and it is available for use by you. Uh, on the other hand, private uh, cloud, uh, uh, you have a complete setup which can be created for you and managed by a cloud service provider in your private resources. And so this provides you much more security because the data and the, the hardware and everything lies with you. However, the, the core advantages of a cloud, I believe, are lost in a kind of a private cloud because you do not, you have to first of all invest in hardware, you have to, so all that capex cost reduction which was there as a part of your advantage to the cloud gets lost out. But yes, this is specifically for uh, government organizations which are having highly uh, sensitive information. You can have much more compliance because if uh, the hardware is with you, the data which uh, resides is with you. So the privacy issues are also much lesser and easier to manage in such kind of a deployment. Community cloud is something which is for a specific community. So I possibly thought a good example would be to introduce Megraj, which is the community cloud for the government departments for the government of India. So, uh, uh, so they provide artificial intelligence as a service, backup and storage as a service, infrastructure and platform, of course, is provided, data analysis as a service. So all of these, I believe, is, a, uh, is equivalent to kind of a community cloud, wherein all of these are maintained by government of India or government departments and the community can utilize the services of uh, this cloud which is available to them. Uh, so uh, the, the next, uh, the last one is the hybrid cloud uh, wherein you have the advantages of both a public and a private cloud. So you have a private cloud on-prem and you also have a public cloud and you, uh, you merge them together so that you can and you can also have multiple clouds so now the advantage of kind of a hybrid cloud is that in case you want to migrate like the organizations are migrating to the cloud you may not want to completely migrate so you want to hold some critical processes applications and data on prem and also you want to migrate to cloud for certain things for uh, for maybe uh, uh, initial migration to see how you can completely migrate onto a cloud later. Also, this allows you to have a good uh, flexibility wherein you can have a very small uh, distribution and a hardware available with you. However, when the peak load arises, like uh, if uh, for an organization like Amazon or Flipkart, they can have certain uh, infrastructure which they already have, which is residing with them. And now they want to uh, the flexibility to, uh, to uh, uh, handle the load which comes in peak time for sales and all that they can do cloud bursting and they can possibly uh, have the infrastructure uh, integrated on a public cloud and uh, massively uh, have the advantage of scaling up in requirement uh, in the times of requirement you can also have different public clouds wherein you can have a setup of your business continuity and dr sites available on the different uh, clouds so now coming to the security part of the cloud which is which is the more interesting part for today so when we talk about cloud security we have uh, various uh, uh, endpoints of a spoke which i can call it the uh, of, of, of a wheel so we need to take care of the governance in the cloud we need to take care of the compliance issues which are there because your data is not stored at a single place you do not know where the data is at some, uh, uh, although some uh, cloud uh, service providers tell you uh, with regions and availability and all that, but essentially, if you uh, you can create your data in a manner uh, that it can reside anywhere, inside the country, outside the country, anywhere. You also need to have a robust identity and access management in the cloud. You need to have data security, of course, availability, and uh, the uh, DCB, uh, the BCDR planning as well. So. The security interaction model essentially is how we would like to model the security in a cloud, wherein first of all, we try to see any organization if we want to go and migrate onto a cloud, we would like to see first of all, identify what our needs are, 
and accordingly choose a service model and a deployment model which suits our requirement nothing is right and nothing is wrong in securing the cloud you need to choose your specific service model you need to choose your deployment model which fits your requirements based on the pros and cons everything has got its pros and cons so accordingly you first choose your deployment and service model after that you choose your requirements in terms of compliance in terms of data security in terms of uh, privacy needs and so so i have put pci dss hipaa glpa these are various regulations and compliance requirements which are there across the world uh, we also now with this uh, personal data protection bill of 2021 india soon is going to have their own personal data uh, protection law which will require as of now uh, unfortunately india doesn't have any privacy laws so uh, specifically there is no law which uh, allows or which which requires the service providers to ensure the privacy of uh, the users but yes with with this uh, uh, personal data protection law coming in hopefully that will be uh, the past so now once you you have identified the requirements of compliance privacy data security pcdr all of these requirements which when you have identified you apply the controls which are there in the security control model for applications on the cloud you need to see to follow a cloud uh, a data uh, model you need to follow uh, uh, the secure development model uh, and also you need to have various uh, levels of security at the level of a web application firewall whether you have a database activity monitoring solution you can have your vpcs cut out in a manner that they are secure you can secure them by a cloud front distribution network which can possibly uh remove the uh, issues which may come from uh, ddos so these are the solutions which you need to identify for protecting the information which is down below you can have a dlp solution you can have uh, your encryption solutions which are available then you can have your uh, for the management you can have your grc framework you need to use the uh, the logs you need to use the uh, monitoring uh, and the logging functionalities which are provided by the cloud uh, service providers so you need to uh, have all of these comprehensively thought of and incorporated into a solution when you are looking at making a solution in the cloud it is very easy to say that you take a, a traditional application take it on the cloud migrate it move it and it will run well no it may not run well and you need to take care of all these requirements before we take a conscious call to migrate an application on to the cloud so uh, network you have these uh, nids and ips solutions firewalls and uh, uh, trusted computing is another thing you need to have these hardware security modules possibly if you want to secure the if you want to uh, securely store the keys uh, you you can have uh, the uh, uh, various masking solution anonymization tokenization techniques for the privacy part and mostly the physical security is taken care of by the cloud service providers in terms of a secure data center so mostly that it has to be seen only if you are acting as part of a cloud service provider so if you if you join the place where you are a part of cloud service provider you have to take care of how do you secure your physical data centers and take care of that security as well so coming quickly to the uh, to the top uh, 10 cloud security risks i am sure everybody is aware about owasp i don't have to uh, talk about that so owasp has come out uh, along with their uh, web vulnerabilities they have come out with uh, cloud security risks and vulnerabilities which are as listed we will cover them all uh, with a few thoughts which came to my mind and i will possibly talk about a little bit on all the risks and a few of the mitigation mechanisms so the first one being the accountability and data risk in a traditional data center as i already mentioned the complete accountability is and the ownership is with the owning organization however in the cloud as we have already discussed that there is a shared responsibility model so we need to be very clear as to what is the responsibility of the cloud service provider and what is the responsibility of the consumer or the owner or the uh, the user who is creating and architecting a solution so not only you need to create a secure solution on the cloud but also you need to take care of questions like who is accountable for security of all the layers we need to be very clear about that 
we need to have discussions uh, uh, with the cloud service provider we need to have strong uh, service level agreements with the cloud and you need to have strict contracts which bind the cloud service provider to provide the kind of uh, uh, specific security measures which you would want them to provide uh, as slas so who owns the cloud and uh, who owns the data where is it stored the the uh, the public buckets so the public buckets is one of the biggest concern in the cloud when uh, and this this uh, brings me to misconfigurations possibly i think i am covering that little later in one of the other risk but uh, public buckets are uh, one of the most uh, 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 insecure things on the cloud uh, generally which happen because of uh, misconfigurations and uh, 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 maybe uh, they left out uh, issues because you have created a bucket and you have left it public uh along with that the data risks include uh, whether the data is encrypted how is it encrypted where are the keys so in a on prem environment in a traditional environment you may be able to hold the keys securely you may be able to develop a solution wherein you can use the keys in a secure manner but cloud service providers provide you different kind of options and solutions for key management you can have a key management uh, provided by the cloud service provider like amazon provides you securing and encrypting s3 buckets uh, uh, as you go so that's a transparent encryption which is done if you select and choose the options and configure it right all your buckets data would be encrypted automatically without you doing anything so that provides you flexibility however the issue in that is that uh, the cloud service provider owns the keys they manage the key they rotate the keys and they will always be able to see the data which is there inside because they own the keys then they also allow you to have a on prem key management uh, service uh, residing with you they provide you a, a option wherein they can manage the key management server for you and you can only utilize the services you can use it but it resides with you however it is managed by the cloud service provider there another concept is uh, wherein you manage your own key management server and you encrypt the data at your premise with your uh, keys with uh, with uh, your uh, uh, key management service and you send the data across encrypted across a channel as well so that's the most secure but may not be the most uh, advised solution it depends on your requirement your need and you need to architect a solution with all of these considerations in mind as to what suits you uh another thing that second second uh, risk which is there is the uh, user identity federation uh so this is a risk because now going on the cloud you have the flexibility today wherein because of the federated identities you are able to log in into zoom to this to that service only with a single google account so this is all made possible with the federated identities cloud service provider are very well integrated to provide not only the services on a uh, on a on on that cloud service provider but also on other cloud service providers with identi uh, with the federated identity using a common identity across services across uh, service providers as well however we need to be uh, uh, doubly sure as to what uh, uh, what is our mechanism of storing our credentials how are we accessing and uh, providing these if we use uh, and this also presents a challenge wherein all of this federated identities with the third trusted third party providers if any one identity uh, if it is lost through any one of the trusted third parties your entire uh, federated identity mechanism is lost because your your credentials are lost and uh, somebody would be able to access all the applications uh, through the common identity so that's that's a considerate call which you have to take whether you would like to have a, a federated identity although it provides flexibility uh, but yes it's a considerate call which you have to take based on the uh, the service and the usage which you have uh, the third part the third risk is the regulatory compliance in the cloud so this is one of the biggest issues in the cloud when we move on to the cloud uh, you don't know where the data is now today uh, there are uh, different regions in the world who are following different privacy regulations mostly in terms of privacy and compliance regulations 
uh, although banking sector has come to some specified set of compliances, they are the most organized in terms of the compliances. You have PCI DSS compliance, which is followed for payment card industry all across every every banking institution, financial institution uses those kind of compliances. You have got SOX compliances, you have got, and then you have got GDPR compliance, which is specific to European Union. Uh, GDPR is general data protection regulation, wherein uh, the privacy of the European Union citizens are uh, protected by GDPR law. It is, uh, it is strict. It uh, has got various things, which possibly I think in my talk uh, we are covering later as well. But this is one of the privacy laws which are specific for uh, 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 European Union countries. And they are very, very strict about it. And if any organization needs to hold the data of European citizens, we need to be compliant for GDPR regulation. Otherwise, we are liable for penalty. So, so while an organization may look at uh, the data which they were holding before on-prem, now because the data is residing at various places all across, we need to also follow the local regulations as well as the regulations of that country, along with the regulations uh, which are there for the citizens of that country. So these compliance, regulatory compliance require a particular thought as to where the data will reside, how will the privacy be governed, uh, uh, not only the privacy, but also the various other compliances which are there in terms of uh, uh, the other guidelines which are there, HIPAA, SOX, uh, they also need to be taken care of. Uh, okay, moving on to the fourth risk is the business continuity and resilience. Uh, in an on-prem environment, business continuity was taken care of by doing a business impact analysis, identifying what my risks are, how my, uh, uh, and then doing a risk uh, assessment, doing a complete modeling, wherein you may, you may want to have a threat modeling, you may want to do a, a, a complete assessment and find out your vulnerabilities and then take actions uh, to mitigate the risks in whichever best possible manner. Uh, you need to also have a DR site established uh, and then you need to have plans in place and you need to test them regularly as well. In a cloud, uh, this can be done in an easy manner. The cloud provides you uh, services like infrastructure as code wherein you can create your complete DR site uh, by creating, by writing a code and you can completely migrate on to the DR site immediately. You can have you can have different mechanisms of uh, the business continuity and uh, uh, disaster recovery wherein you can go on uh, from on-prem uh, solution in a normal environment and you can have your uh, uh, business continuity and disaster recovery site on cloud. You can have uh, your main infrastructure and also the BCDR on, on the same cloud or you can go ahead and you can create a uh, uh, solution wherein you are performing and you are you are doing your business operations on one cloud and you can have your BCDR on another cloud. So different models again, uh, it all depends on uh, uh, how you want to architect your solution. All of them have got their pros and cons. I will not go deep into all of them and explain that. But yes, things like vendor lock-in. Vendor lock-in is wherein you are logged into a vendor because of the portability issues, because of various things. In a service level agreement, he may say that uh, data, taking data into the cloud is free. However, taking data outside the cloud costs. So if you have not done your agreement properly and if you are not aware about the costs which it takes to migrate the data out of the cloud and you have huge amount of data which you have moved into, then it is very difficult for you to move that out onto a separate cloud or uh, to move out of a uh, uh, particular uh, region and they may charge you phenomenally for that. So uh, we need to be very sure while architecting uh, uh, the solutions on the cloud as to uh, how the uh, service level agreements are defined, what are your RTO, RPO requirements, what are the penalties which you can levy on the CSP while uh, architecting a solution and uh, uh, also you need to test for resilience. So, uh, Chaos Monkey is a very good example which came to my mind. Netflix uh, 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 has their production environment and they have this uh, software tool which they have developed for testing their own environment which is now available on GitHub as well. 
and they have made it open source anybody can uh, use it so that's the confidence of a uh, organization which runs this uh, tool which creates chaos in their production environment so you really require that to do that and uh, so what it, what does what uh, this tool does is it uh, it randomly uh, shuts down services shuts down servers switches off vms removes uh, connections between services all of that is being done in a randomized manner by this tool and uh, uh, you need to architect a solution so resilient that uh, even if something like this happens your solution can uh, certainly have the resilience uh, to uh, be up and about without any uh, loss of service to the consumers so that is something which uh, really require you to understand the services which are being provided by the cloud service provider and build in this resilience into your solution by using various various uh, things are available like availability zones uh, uh, regions and so all of these cloud uh, uh, service providers are providing these kind of services but yes you need to create a solution like that otherwise when you are under an attack you will if if the solution is not resilient enough it will go down so that's another uh, risk which is there uh, the next one is uh, the user privacy and secondary use of data so uh, the security of uh, pii which is personally identifiable information is a big concern as i already mentioned it to you there are various laws which are which are already there existing for european union uh, there is a uh, us uh, uh, is uh, somehow not uh, as much uh, uh into the privacy laws they have their own they have you know uh, the california state has one ccpa which i am aware of which which is similar to gdpr and that uh, takes that but yes the major difference which uh, which is there between the european union and us is uh you have to give your consent is important in european union beforehand a priori consent however uh, in us that is not you may be asked however it can be at a later day so anyways uh, moving ahead so this this privacy laws are important we need to understand the privacy laws and we need to uh, make your solution according to the privacy laws of various regions across uh, so so we have our own uh, uh, i think i have already discussed about the personal data protection law which is expected shortly in our country which is very similar to uh, the draft version i saw and it's very similar to gdpr regulations uh, uh, which which as i was mentioning you need to have notice consent purpose integrity and various other things uh, including the right to be forgotten so that that all has to be catered for in a cloud solution tomorrow uh, uh, if we follow gdpr then possibly you can go up and say that i have right to be forgotten and you can tell amazon or flipkart or any anybody or any uh, service provider with data residing in india you can tell i want all data related to me to be wiped off completely and within a suitable amount of time and during that suitable amount of time if the organization is not able to do that and you have sufficient proof to believe that your data has not been wiped off completely you can sue them and they will have to pay huge penalties so these are considerations so you need to take care and design a solution in an organization suppose you work for flipkart or something and you you have designed a solution which has not taken care of of uh, the right to being forgotten and you have not taken care that how to identify all the data related to a particular customer and to wipe it completely off in a manner that it is non retrievable if you have not taken that consideration tomorrow it can become a it can have a business impact so so all of these need to be taken care of while we are uh, designing solutions in the cloud uh, we need to use techniques like encryption anonymization masking tokenization these are techniques based on the requirement everywhere encryption may not be required it may have uh, uh, unnecessary overheads so you may use tokenization you may need use masking so these are the techniques which are there which are utilized in the cloud for uh, architecting good solutions uh, the next one is the service and data integration while we are migrating uh, from traditional applications which were mostly monolithic applications today's uh, day and age of developing applications is completely changed 
you are on the cloud with uh, microservices architecture uh, you are on the cloud with uh, containerized solutions you have docker you have kubernetes you so you are you are architecting solutions in a very different manner you have devops techniques wherein you are uh, uh, deploying uh, you are developing continuously you are integrating continuously you are deploying continuously so these kind of ci cd pipeline concepts devops concepts all of these which are enabled by cloud today need uh, integration between these services and these services so you require secure integration between these uh, microservices you require uh, api gateways for protecting your services from attacks you require uh, a proper uh, identity and uh, uh, authentication so that you your services which are uh, which are which are acting independently are only uh, accessible to the authorized users so such kind of uh, solutions which are enabled by the cloud present their own risk and challenges and we need to take care of them by using solutions like uh, api gateways Uh, uh, your web application firewalls your uh, 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 logging and monitoring solutions and the protection of the data at rest and in transit with various solutions dlp solutions encryption solutions and all that uh, another risk uh, the next one is the multi tenancy and physical security now multi tenancy is a risk which comes only on cloud on prem you don't have multi tenancy you are not generally sharing your hardware with others but yes in a cloud you have got a uh, risk uh, of multi tenancy wherein because you have gone uh, yes there are solutions and cloud service providers which are providing you uh, independent space in the hardware but yes of course then you lose out the uh, advantages of pay as you go and uh, these are uh, these kind of uh, things so so multi tenancy generally happens on the cloud and it's unavoidable in my uh, understanding and but because of that you have got attacks which you have to take care of in your uh, in your uh, uh, solution so you have got these uh, guest escape attacks and host escape attacks wherein uh, wherein the user of a vm may be able to uh, insert a malicious code script and may be able to escape out of his own vm and then he has got uh, access to the other vms which are uh, available on the management plane Uh, even worst is the host escape wherein you are able to come out of the host environment and you have got the complete access to the entire management plane of the cloud and you are able to access all the hardware so so these uh, so yes of course the cloud service providers are uh, working towards making their platforms resilient the the uh, the vir virtualization environments uh, being resilient to such kind of attacks but yes these are risks which we have to be aware of and we have to also be aware of uh, the issues which happen because of the uh, commingling of data which is like your data resides with another uh, entity's data in a singular hardware so for example if uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a uh, issue in regards to uh, another user uh, another tenant uh, of the cloud and there is a uh, inquiry and then uh, the government requires or the court orders a uh, hold uh, which is called as a legal hold the the data may be frozen for you as well and in fact if for inquiry if the data is required to be taken by some authorities for forensics or anything your data it is very difficult for the cloud service provider to identify segregate and give only the data for that particular entity so your data also has a risk of going into other hands wherein you don't know whether it will possibly make its way out so you need to uh, use solutions like encryption and various others but you need to take care of uh, such kind of risks which are there in the cloud uh, you also have these cross tenant attacks site tunnel attacks and uh, others which are there so the security of uh, your uh, your part has to be maintained the next one is the incident analysis and forensics now with the, all these complex integrations in the cloud there are significant risks which are there uh, if you want to do your incident management in a traditional environment it is much easier because the environment belongs to you you can do forensics you can take out any data you want you can take out any logs you want but on the cloud you uh, the forensics may not be that easy 
you may not be able to get the kind of logs which you may be able to take out in your a uh, traditional environment so although uh, the cloud service providers provide you a whole lot of logs in terms of uh, which can which can allow you to do a lot of forensics but yes some logs may not be available to you what machine which vm was running on which uh, region which hardware may not be easily provided to you by the cloud service provider so you need to incorporate these kind of issues into the service level agreements that in case of a requirement of a incident analysis what will be the kind of uh, logs which the cloud service provider can provide if required they may not allow you to do vapt as you can do on a uh, on pre on uh, uh, prem environment uh, cloud service providers do not generally allow you to do a, a vapt on on the cloud network so these are the risks so you need to, to accordingly take care of your solution architect it in a manner and uh take care of these risks which are involved while moving on to the cloud the infrastructure security uh mostly it is the responsibility of the cloud service provider uh but yes when when we are talking about the cloud resources it also is the responsibility of the cloud consumer so as i was mentioning to you public buckets uh, are one of the biggest source of attacks if you see the the uh when when the attacks are there on the cloud service providers mostly it is the public buckets and the data which is residing in these buckets which becomes available and is published across by malicious actors in fact uh, when i was going through and reading up i also realized that uh, it is as easy as uh, uh, getting the data, identifying public buckets by using tools within 3 to 4 minutes of making a bucket public so people have done this exercise wherein they have made a, pub, a bucket public and they have tried to see in the logs uh, whether these buckets are being accessed and uh, how uh, who is able to access them and when have they been able to uh, identify whether these buckets are available so it has happened that within 3 to 4 minutes of making a bucket public people have already started accessing that bucket so it is it is as fast as that uh you need to have appropriate controls for secure access by identity and access uh, management uh concepts like segregation of duties attribute based access control all of these are provided by the cloud service provider but we need to create a solution taking care of these aspects also we need to uh we need to use uh and have immutable infrastructure wherein we can have a golden image and you need to utilize the advantages which the cloud provide you with infrastructure as code wherein you can you can do a complete management and configuration management patch management all of that in a automated manner and much faster so so the solution will be much more secure but if we do not take care of such things then uh, yes uh, we do have these risks which are associated the last one is the uh, the uh, uh, the risk which uh, which uh, a uh, lot of people have abused which is the non production environment so typically we uh, take care of the production environment uh, but the non production environment generally gets uh, neglected so which is used for design development is mostly misconfigured sometimes because you have not paid attention to securing your non production environment but there will always be links which are there there will be always uh, access permissions which are there in your non production environments which can be exploited by the malicious att attackers and then they can find a way into your production environment so these uh, these have happened in the past and therefore this has come as uh, risk number 10 in the top 10 cloud risks so we need to pay attention to the non production environments equally we need to take care of uh, uh, these resources uh these uh, in fact these have been utilized for uh, uh, attacks like crypto mining so you may not know you may have a machine which is already there in your non production environment and one day you will get a huge hefty bill because somebody has been uh, using your uh, resource for crypto mining so these are attacks which have happened and we need to be aware about them and take care of these so uh, 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 coming to a few of the key privacy concerns uh, we have we have already talked about a uh, 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 bit about the privacy but yes security and privacy go hand in hand because moving ahead people are becoming more aware about privacy and the laws of privacy are becoming more and more strict day by day as uh, with my experience what i can see 
uh, the users are becoming much more aware and therefore privacy is a concern now so there are these some considerations which i have just jotted down like uh, storage retention destruction auditing privacy breaches and who is responsible so i will try to cover this quickly maybe because we are uh, also going to be running out of time so but i will i will cover this quickly uh, so in a multi tenant environment as we have discussed where the storage is shared where you do not know where your data may be stored where uh, you may have to comply to various requirements compliance requirements of various regions we need to have a solution which is well architected for taking care of these considerations of the privacy while storing the uh, data of individuals so the concepts of data owner data controller data processor we need to be aware of that we need to take care of these considerations we need to be aware about the compliance regulations requirements laws which are governing these so that tomorrow in case of a breach we need to know what are the requirements uh, for notification in case of a breach wherein we have to notify the authorities we have to notify the users all of these are required to be known and understood in when we are talking about the privacy concerns uh, in the cloud the data which is retained so uh, uh, the uh, cloud may provide you an opportunity to put the data into infrequent access and then you may want to put it into archival and you may forget about it but we need to have proper retention policies in place because every data which is there in the cloud uh, uh, and talking from the perspective of privacy you are storing a uh, data uh, uh, pii data of individuals and if you put them into retention you do not know at what time it may leak out and this only puts uh, a liability on businesses so therefore we need to identify what is the retention period which is required and we should only retain data for that particular duration and not anything more than what is required essentially so so this also needs to be catered for in sls with your cloud so that uh, uh, you are very clear as to what is the retention policy where the data is being retained it may happen that uh, wh while you are putting the data into uh, retention or archival it is going and retaining in a data which puts you on uh, 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 on a, another region which requires you to comply in uh, in requirements of that particular region so you need to be very careful where the data is residing even for retention so destruction uh, uh, the concept of cloud the destruction is uh, the uh, you cannot you cannot the uh, most secure way of destroying in a traditional environment is to destroy the hardware uh, the disks uh, but uh, in cloud that may not be possible so generally cloud service providers use crypto shredding which is a technique wherein you encrypt your complete data which you want to destroy securely you encrypt it with a key you encrypt the key with another key and you safely destroy or take uh, get rid of the second key so this is this is kind of uh, crypto shredding uh, and this is uh, this is what is generally used in the cloud for destruction uh, which is the most secure way of destroying uh, uh, pii data in the cloud but yes you need to uh, answer a few questions wherein you need to know whether the csp did not retain any additional copy of that because finally we have to understand that the accountability of pii is of the data owner which is the cloud consumer so suppose i i have created an application uh, for my use i i host it on cloud and i take personal data of people who are logging in for taking my services and even if i have kept it with the cloud service provider and even if i am able to prove that uh, the uh, breach has happened because of the negligence of the cloud service provider essentially the data owner is accountable for the uh, data to the data subjects so therefore i am accountable for it you may have service level agreements wherein you may uh, you may make the cloud service provider pay for the damages but finally the responsibility the accountability i would say lies with the uh, data owner so i need to notify the users in case there is a breach i need to they may ask compensation from me i i have to give the compensation immediately i may uh, take it back again from the cloud service provider later based on my penalties and sls but yes it is my 
final accountability so auditing and monitoring is another issue in terms of the pii on the cloud we need to ensure that the cloud service providers are audited monitored you have got these concepts of uh, 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 the risk management frameworks the cloud security guidelines iso frameworks iso 27000 1 and 2 which was there for uh, isms information security management system you have got iso 27 uh, to 27000 17 and 18 which are there specifically for security in the cloud and privacy in the cloud then you have got uh, 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 the uh, so then you have got this uh, 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 csa uh, star registry which is the cloud security alliance uh, security trust and uh, uh, star i am forgetting the a in that but that's the registry which takes care and maps uh, the various uh, uh, the uh, various compliance requirements the risk management frameworks into one and they provide a self assessment questionnaire to the cloud service providers and they uh, they uh, the cloud service so they have these certifications in terms of level 1 csa star uh, verified so which is which is only a self certification then you have got level 2 which is a third party audit and then you have got level 3 which is the highest level which is a continuous monitoring so when we go to a cloud service provider we need to ensure that for the services which we are using is the cloud service provider uh, uh, accredited in terms of these uh, uh, these compliances so so that that kind of uh, audit monitoring and uh, ne needs to be checked by the cloud consumers yeah so uh, then uh, the privacy breaches and the information so when a breach has occurred whether the csp notifies you in time or not because the accountability is yours you need to notify the users you need to notify the authority in time so these need to be taken care of in the service level agreements which are done and made with the cloud service provider how is the contract enforced who is at fault these need to be very clearly defined in the contract so therefore contract management with the cloud service providers by a thorough professional who is uh, who is there Uh, needs to be taken care of by organizations uh now this uh, uh, gets me to how do you decide uh, in uh, while taking uh, security decisions in the cloud so we need to uh, identify the assets which we are putting in the cloud what kind of deployment which we are doing what kind of service model which we are using and then we come back to the concept of the cia triad wherein you need to protect the confidentiality integrity and ensure availability so uh, these are the concepts which are generally there in traditional environment but uh, this this um, method and mechanism of the cia triad is now fading away with a new concept uh, which is die so you can ensure cia with die and how it happens die uh, by the way is uh, distributed immutable and ephemeral so this is a concept which i like and uh, i uh, i try to uh, see how it maps to the cia triad and it very beautifully fits in wherein confidentiality can be achieved by making some information or some data or some resource ephemeral ephemerality means that it is temporary so if you have something temporary you only have data which is residing which is temporary you only have a resource which is temporary you don't need to finally take care of confidentiality because it is temporary the data is temporary so you don't need to take care of confidentiality similarly for integrity if you have immutability like you have got immutable workloads you have got uh, uh, images which are fixed which are immutable you don't change them at all they run the way they have they have been created from the golden image you want to change them you will re have requirements to change if you want to change a immutable infrastructure you create a new golden image and across your entire infrastructure across your entire architecture you take this golden image and replace all of the images with this new immutable infrastructure and this is very simple today with infrastructure as code you can create a, your entire this thing as a solution as a code and you can replace it in one go immediately so this takes care of your configuration management this takes care of your patch management and 
this provides me integrity because if it is immutable if it cannot be changed it will provide me integrity now coming to the availability availability is provided by distribution so if you have a distributed architecture if you have taken care of resilience in your architecture you have uh, created it in a manner that uh, uh, it it is replicated it is distributed you have achieved availability because uh, it will be available at some place so therefore uh, the concept of moving on from cia wherein uh, there are tools techniques and we are always running behind to secure and to provide and fulfill the cia always and every time if we have this concept of die it uh, you don't need to manage the cia trial after that so uh, so uh, that's an interesting concept which i thought we'll uh, share with you uh, so now coming to the attacks so can we determine where an infrastructure in a uh, in a cloud uh, instance is located no you can uh, yes you can can you identify uh, 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 whether instances are existent you can adversary can launch instances which can which can be resident with others and all of these attacks are possible today in the cloud if the attacker wants he can get this uh, information uh, with yes with with uh, the tools which are available to him by penetrating your uh, uh, not so well architected solution you can get this kind of information and therefore the attacks are possible on the cloud so uh, coming to my conclusion cloud is a great fit you are provided you meet your risk requirements you identify your risk requirements you meet your risk requirements uh, you uh, you are able to take care of your data flow needs which are there and you architect a solution which is uh, thoughtfully designed which is taking care of all the aspects Uh, of security in a cloud yes then it will provide you the benefits of low cost maybe these savings maybe even more but yes it provides you low maintenance it provides you performance and all the advantages which a cloud provides you so uh, i think this is the final slide which i have wherein uh, there is no universal answer as you must have seen throughout my talk i have said uh, it depends because it actually depends on what is the kind of requirement you have so your solution will completely depend on that and you need to uh, evaluate your needs and you need to match it with the capabilities of your service provider and you need to uh, ensure uh, that your service provider is able to deliver with uh, strong contracts and sls so i think that's all what i had with me and i think uh, sort of i i am on time yeah yeah you are on time almost okay. on time so, so, uh, so any so questions I... from the audience so i have like one uh, query in my mind and uh, this is that uh, Uh, you know all this uh, owas related uh, principles that are there it's it's yeah we all know that but i think the major problem that uh, industry faces most of the time is that uh, between principles and practice right i mean you do know that there are so many things that you should do right but then when you start translating them into practices right uh, you you suddenly realize that there is a cost associated with it right like you just mentioned towards the end that yeah you you do make savings but these savings are pretty much in the longer run right i mean you avoid pitfalls and cert certainly if you avoid pitfalls you'll you'll avoid uh, you know additional uh, costs but uh, one of the major problems that industry faces is that uh, you have you need some kind of upfront investment into uh, building systems which are more secure which are more resilient so uh, what are your experiences with respect to that because um, we have a lot of legacy systems already in place right and i mean the whole world is filled up with legacy systems to be honest right so so how do you uh, you know tackle this problem with legacy systems because um, they've already been built uh, where do you start from we are facing such a problem already here that we want to uh, you know have a kind of uh, uh, security overview of our systems whether how you know how ready we are for a kind of a cyber attack but uh, if we we suddenly realize it's it's not that easy because we have such a vast uh, uh, you know legacy uh, setup 
that really nobody knows where to start from so any pointers on that from your okay, side okay so yeah that's a very very interesting question uh, and uh, i would like to go to my experience when i was uh, fresh from iit kanpur i moved out into a role wherein i was into the design and development of uh, uh, security solutions uh, uh, wherein we had these legacy systems which are encryption systems which have been designed developed long back and we have to maintain them because there is no alternative presently or maybe the users it it there are as you have already brought out a lot of challenges in migrating these legacy systems so there is you cannot be uh, ever ready to say that today okay within the next one year i will migrate all my legacy application systems uh, into a new one so that's not possible at all and we will always keep facing challenges in terms of security vis a vis what the legacy system has provided us uh, the kind of vulnerabilities which are available we only need to architect uh, solutions and controls possibly in terms of uh, uh, software solutions possibly in terms of processes whatever you cannot control through software and which you cannot everything cannot be controlled through a software solution everything cannot be controlled uh, 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 uh security cannot be always achieved through a technical solution that's what i say so you need to have processes and definitely the third branch is people so you need to have people process and technology which is which is very important in managing a solution throughout its life cycle so i have faced problems wherein uh, uh, the technology is obsolete uh, we have challenges not only in terms of uh, securing the architecture but also in terms of maintaining them so uh, you are using for uh, probably uh, smc cards and all that uh, in legacy systems which are no more available i have faced the situation wherein we had to customize a interface in between or a hardware in between which will convert the data from a new uh, new uh, uh, a new device maybe a sd card or a Uh, usb and convert it into a uh, uh, smc card and then it gets plugged in for use it so and we rotate those because there are a limited set which are only available so these are challenges which which you have uh, correctly brought out and we need to possibly the only answer which i can give to this is wherever we are not able to solve it with technology we need to solve it with processes and people right thanks thanks a lot uh, anwar sir and uh, if if there are no more questions uh, i i hope the, you know we have already run out of time but any any other questions okay so let me thank you sir uh, thank you for uh, visiting us thank you for enlightening us with whatever experiences you've had in cyber security all this while and uh, we just hope that we'll probably have some other time when you are available and we'll we'll have another chat with you maybe okay. right maybe maybe you can guide us with with some of our own uh, uh, you know security issues that we have here so thank you thank you uh, anwar sir thank you everyone who joined us it's quite late i know in the evening and you guys stayed back so uh, thank you everyone who joined and uh, we'll meet uh, we'll we'll probably meet again and in the next iteration of uh, cyber jagrutta divas till then uh, thank you thank you anwar sir thank you everyone thank you. thank you very much for inviting me it was a pleasure talking to everyone thank you thank, so you. thank you good evening everyone bye good evening.